How's it going, everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is What If Deku Had Sans Powers, the movie. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, and now, let's begin. Izuku would be born to his mother, Inko, and would end up having a very happy life. He was all bubbly and jittery and very overall happy, as he had tons of friends because they all loved his personality and they just he was easy to be friends with. However, this would all take a sudden turn when Izuku turned to the age of four. He would hop out of his bed, rushing to his mother's room, knocking on the door very rapidly. Mom, mom, wake up! It's the time! It's time that I go get to see what my cork is, Izuku would yell, jumping in the air. His mother would drowsily open up the door before telling Izuku that the doctor's office doesn't open for another two hours. He needs to go back to sleep. She can't deal with him waking her up all this early all the time. Izuku would sigh before heading back to his room in a sort of walk of shame, having to sit in his bed and room, waiting for just the hours to slowly pass by, as this would end up being the just longest two hours of his life. As Izuku would be sitting there waiting, his mother would finally walk into the room. Come on, Izuku, let's go eat breakfast, and then we can head out to the doctor's office. Izuku would rush over to his mother, so they would then walk down the stairs to the kitchen, where she had prepared a nice breakfast for him and herself. Once they were finished, they would hop in a car, as they would then speed off towards the doctor's office. As they would arrive, Inko would check Izuku in, as Izuku would be sitting, bouncing in his chair, just way too excited to see what his cork was going to be. As a couple minutes would end up passing, the doctor would end up coming out and would look down at a clipboard. Um, Izuku Midoriya. As Izuku would hop up out of his seat before skipping off to follow the doctor. This was going to be the happiest day of Izuku's life. This is where he was going to get the most amazing quirk of his entire life, and he was going to become the hero that he's always dreamed to be. However, this wasn't the case. The doctor would take a couple of tests before sending Izuku out to a room where his mother would pick him up, taking him to a private area. As the doctor would walk in, looking back down at a clipboard, as he would then sigh deeply. I'm sorry, Midoriya's. It appears that Izuku here doesn't have a cork. I know this may be a lot to take in, so I'll let you all... Uh, by yourselves for a couple moments. The doctor would step out as he would end up hearing the dropping of Izuku's All Might action figure as it had broken, the head popping off of the socket as Izuku staring down at the broken figure would end up just staring at it completely in a daze. All his dreams had just flooded right out of his ear in a moment. All just them as the words of the doctor came flooding in, as his dreams came flooding out. Izuku, stand, standing there now, holding the broken bits of his action figure, as he would just look up at his mother, shakily holding the two broken pieces in his hand. I, I can still become a hero, right, Mom? I, Izuku would say, as Inko would stare down at Izuku, not knowing what to say. I... I uh, n n I don't know, Izuku. That's for you to decide. Izuku would nod his head as he would try to make himself better, jumping up in the air, yelling, I'm still gonna become a hero, as tears would then slowly fall down out of Izuku's small child eyes. As the doctor would then come back in, as he would tell Inko that she can find all of the lab results, all of that stuff, just online after they log into their account and all of that. I hope you all have a good day, and I hope this doesn't make it any worse. The doctor would say, remorseful about all of the stuff that he had said to them. Inka would nod her head before grabbing Izuku and taking him out of the doctor's office, taking him back home. Izuku would walk into his house into their house as he would just walk aimlessly around the house as if not knowing what to do. All of the things that he had wanted to do and become, his dreams were gone, shattered into a billion different pieces, all just by the words of a doctor. Izuku would just look down at his hand before clenching it. I'm still gonna become a hero. This isn't gonna stop me. 
Zuko would say. However, as the years passed and the bullying would grow and grow, his dreams had slowly faded out of his mind. He really just knew it wasn't possible. He had heard of stories about how Corkless people attempted to become heroes before their lives were completely destroyed by a single weak thug or villain. As Zuko had decided that it's best for him and his mom to just stop this dream entirely. As Izuku, by the age of eight, had undergone tons of bullying at his school, all of his friends that he once had were now gone, despising him, glaring and looking down at him as if he was just a piece of dirt or trash sitting in their way. This was especially the case with young Bakugo Kotsuki, who would just kick around and bully Izuku menacingly, just completely not caring for Izuku's life at all, as he would punch and kick and use Izuku as a punching bag and a training dummy. It was truly disgusting what Bakugo was doing. However, Izuku would end up going out of school that day, being bruised and battered. He had just gotten a beating session outside at the playground while waiting for his mother to arrive in the car to pick him up to take him home. Izuku would see his mother pull up as he would rush past Bakugo, who was still standing in his way, hopping in his mother's car as she would then drive off, worried at Izuku about his injuries as he would brush them off, saying that he was fine. So Inko would continue on driving, still completely worried for her child's sake. Inko would end up swerving out of nowhere as a car would zoom past them, as they would see... This another car would then slam head-on right into their car as she had drifted into the other lane to just dodge the car heading right at them. Izuku would be slammed into the seat in front of him, launched out of the car through the window as his face would then grind against the pavement. Izuku would then awake in a blank, just black, aimless void. Looking around, he would then see a strange, short-looking person staring directly at him as the person would then walk up to Izuku before greeting him. Hello there, Izuku. I'm Sans. I've seen how your life is quite terrible, and I want to decide to fix that for you. And by doing that, I'm going to give you a ton of powers. Get it? A skeleton? As Izuku would look blankly at Sans, who had just made a joke, as Izuku would kind of awkwardly laugh, like, <laughs> Yeah, as Sans would then explain further how he's seen how terrible Izuku's life has been and just wanted to turn it around. As Izuku would be staring blankly at Sans, not no, sure what to say. Well, I'll give you no time to accept her. Now you're gonna get these powers either way. So I'll see you the next time you're close to death, as Izuku would then wake up now sitting in a very bright white room, as doctors would then come flooding in yelling that he's awake, as his heartbeat had been very, very low but steady, as he had been sitting in a coma for the past week. All of that just small time he had been with Sans had been an entire week in the hospital. As Izuku would awake, he would end up just having hundreds of doctors, or not hundreds, but tons of doctors surround him, just asking him questions if he saw anything, if he dreamt of anything, as Izuku would shake his head, signifying that he had just been awoken as if he was sleeping and his dream had been forgotten. However, Izuku had remembered the brief time he had spent with Sans, as his mother would finally walk into the room wearing a crutch or having crutches as she had broken one of her legs. She would come in, she would apologize so much to Izuku. I'm sorry, Izuku, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to almost kill you and I, as Izuku would shake his head, saying that it's no problem, Mom. You didn't mean it. It was the car before us that you swerved around's fault. As Izuku would then be released from the hospital days later, after they made sure everything was fine with him. As Izuku would end up coming into school the next day, as the entire class, who had just not seen him for a week, had heard about what happened. Many of them were unsure if, the, if they should say anything to him, as Izuku would then sit down. Bakugo would then come up to Izuku, as if trying to say something, but just nothing would come out of his mouth, as he would go back to sit down at his desk.
Weeks would end up passing as the bullying would then continue. As Izuku had been hiding his hands up until that point, he had been somewhat scared to show everyone what his hands had become. After he had basically just been given Sans powers, his hands and most of his arms had completely turned to bone. As he would end up finally revealing this, as he would end up walking in with no gloves or anything sh revealing his arm, as it had been the winter when the accident had ended up happening, so it was finally now spring, and Izuku couldn't be wearing long coats. However, he still decided to, as he had seen Sans wear and decided to basically mimic the person that gave him the power that he now possessed. So Izuku would end up walking in wearing a big puffy winter coat as he would end up sitting down. Many of the class would notice his hands looked completely white and pale. They weren't really sure why, as many of them would end up crowding around around Izuku's desk, as they would end up seeing the bone on Izuku's hand, some of them even touching Izuku's hand, wondering what it was. Bakugo would end up walking into the class to see everyone surrounding Izuku, as he would then yell at all of them for what they were doing around Izuku, and why they were all like saying, wow, that's really cool. And many of them were just wondering what Izuku had turned into, as he was wondering why Izuku was getting all of this praise. Bakugo would end up coming into the class, being like, what are y'all doing? Why are you treating him like he's a god? Or at least that's what he thought, as his ego was now in the way, wondering why someone was being praised more than he was. So he would end up walking in, slamming his hand down on Izuku's desk, burning it as Izuku would then raise up his hand as a bone would appear in it, as he would then knock Bakugo right on the head, as Bakugo would then fall over in pain, clenching his head, and like, what the heck was that, Is Deku? As Izuku would look over at Bakugo, as he would just give him a look like, please don't do that again, it's my desk. As the entire just class had seen Izuku summon a bone out of nowhere, Bakugo would s just wonder, how the heck did you do that? You don't have a cork. You're corkless. As many of the class had already just think thought, Izuku now has a cork. He must have gotten it in the accident, while Bakugo was now in denial, saying that he didn't have a cork and that he must just be insane. So Izuku would end up passing through all of the different grades as Izuku would now be 15, sitting in the classroom as the teacher would then walk in. While class, it appears two of the students have decided to go into UA, the first one being Bakugo Katsuki. Yeah, of course I'm going to UA. All of these other rejects could barely manage to scrum out being a sidekick. There's no chance anyone else could even get into that school. As the teacher would then list off Suku's name as well, many of the class would erupt into whispers. Did you hear about what happened? After an accident, he somehow just got no power involving bones or something. Wow, that's kind of creepy. Do you think he's dead or something? I mean, he does kind of look like a skeleton. As the entire class would be talking about his Zuku, as Bakugo would then approach Izuku once more after all the times he had approached him throughout the years. Don't even think about coming to this exam, Izuku. After all, you're just going to humiliate yourself and make me look thousand times better than all of the rest of these rejects. As Izuku, summoning a bone once again, would hit Bakugo right on the head, as the entire crowd or the class would then erupt into laughter, as this wasn't the first time Izuku had done it, and every time Bakugo would go to try to bully someone, Izuku would just decide to do this. It was the one thing that made Bakugo even more pissed off, because here this corkless person in his eyes was showing him up, just knocking him on the head, making him look like a complete loser. So, when the school was over, Izuku would be walking home, as he would end up being approached by Bakugo under a bridge. This is it, Izuku. As Izuku had started to punish Bakugo about calling him Deku, seeing as it was a name that held bad ties, and he just didn't want to be called that. So, he basically made Izuku or Bakugo call him Izuku. However, Bakugo would correct himself, <laughs> like I'm ever gonna use that name. Listen here, Deku. I'm, 
I'll count to three and you better be running. You need to stop acting like you're all this crap. So, here and now, why don't you face me and finally show me you're stronger? As Isuku would then laugh, as Bakugo would charge full on at Isuku, as Isuku would dodge Bakugo's attack, as Bakugo would then continue on rushing towards Isuku. However, Isuku would continue on dodging, as Bakugo would continue on trying to attack. As Bakugo, getting even more frustrated, would yell at Izuku, Why are you dodging, you coward? As finally, Izuku would dodge, pushing Bakugo down, as Bakugo would then hit the ground, sliding on the pavement, creating just scrapes all over his legs and arms. As something would then just explode out of the sewer drain right next to them, there was the sludge villain. As the sludge villain would race towards Bakugo, being the closest person towards him, as he would then start to consume into Bakugo, trying to hide in him. As the sludge villain would then notice Izuku standing there just looking at it, as he was then asked, Wait, aren't you gonna save your friend here from dying? As Izuku would then shrug, well, it's not really my business, plus he's not really my friend. So, how about a coin toss? As Izuku would pull out a coin from his pocket, as the sludge villain was just wondering how this kid was really going to put his friend's life on the line up to a decision of fate from a coin. So Izuku would flip the coin before saying, heads I save him, tails I don't. As it would then land on tails, as Izuku would then wave goodbye to the sludge villain before walking away. Moments later, as Izuku would round the corner, All Might would jump out of nowhere, as the sludge villain would then see All Might, All Might would then attack the sludge villain, as there stood Bakugo coughing out the sludge that was still inside of him. As the sludge villain wasn't able to attack in just pure shock, Izuku had just completely decided not to save Bakugo by the fate of a coin toss, and that was kind of shocking towards the sludge villain thinking that he was going to try to save him. So Bakugo sitting there would end up being seen by All Might as All Might would then just capture up the sludge villain before jumping off as Bakugo would then now be the Deku in the situation. Bakugo had idolized All Might for years, while Izuku had lost all of that just wondering of what All Might was and just lost all of the want to meet All Might years ago. So Bakugo now wanting to become more like All Might as he wanted to be the number one hero and the only person standing in his way was All Might. So Bakugo would now be standing on a building with All Might there saying that that was very irresponsible. However, Bakugo would then show All Might his quirk wanting to be praised by All Might. Well, that's really a good quirk, you know. But it doesn't always take a quirk. You do need a great personality, sort of like mine. <laughs> All Might would then laugh before jumping off as Bakugo would be sitting there as the word personality would linger in his head, as it would just echo and echo and echo. Ten months would end up passing as Izuku had neglected to train at all, thinking that, eh, what's the point? It's just another 50-50 shot I make it or I don't. Kind of like that head-tails flip that I did to save Bakugo. Yeah, but I really could care less if I make it or not. I'll just go out and do other things with my life. This isn't the end of the world if I don't make it. So I guess I'll treat it that way. I might as well give it a shot, seeing as I'm already halfway till death's door, as Izuku would be walking in to the UA campus. Many of the people had heard about a strange-looking skeleton boy who was thinking about taking the entrance exam. It was the talk of UA right now, as Izuku would be walking in. Many of the rumors had come from the class that Izuku was in prior along with the school, just spreading rumors throughout the city about how there was this very strong person that had just decided to get a cork one day. So it was quite confusing to the people surrounding Izuku. Izuku would end up walking into this massive auditorium, just looking around at the pure size of it. Wow, this place is pretty big, Izuku said. As he would then sit down 
as the entirety of the crowd would just be whispering, wondering what was about to happen. Finally, a hero would walk out onto the stage before explaining what the written exam was, passing out the papers as the entirety of the students there would end up taking it. Many of them would then leave after taking it, not wanting to take the hero exam. However, Izuku would stay seated as he would finally just hear about what the hero exam was, how there was these different robots, and how they just had to destroy enough of them to get enough points to pass the exams. So Izuku just heard destroy robots, and decided, hey, what the heck, this might be fun. So Izuku would be sitting, or standing rather, stretching out his body, ready to start just destroying a ton of these robots. So, when the door would open, Izuku would then walk out, while the entirety of the people there would just be seeing Izuku walk out, thinking that he was an idiot and it didn't even say go. However, they would then hear over the intercom that they need to follow him, as heroes never have to be told to go save someone. They would all rush off right past Izuku, as he was just walking around looking for any robots to fight. He really just decided it wasn't use- or it, there was really no use for Izuku to just try to run around using up a ton of energy when he could be saving it for something else, probably when he's cooking something later for his mom, as Izuku had decided that he should probably start to learn how to cook because his mom had pretty much saved him from death that day when they crashed the car. Who knows how much worse it would have been if that speeding car had actually hit them, and a car that had already slowed down had hit them. So Izuku would end up just walking around as he would finally see a crowd of robots. It was a very huge crowd, as Izuku would then just point his hand out as a gaster blaster would then appear right above Izuku's shoulder, as it would then blast out a beam just that would go twirling right towards the robots, completely decimating them. However, it was a crowd of one-pointers, only getting Izuku 15 points, nowhere near the amount to even get him in class 1B. So Izuku would just be walking around again as he would then just feel the ground shake. Izuku would look up towards the sky as he would see a massive zero-pointer raining down, staring at Izuku and the people around him. Many of them would end up running away as Izuku would end up hearing a girl scream. Izuku would look up to see the robot was holding a girl in his hand as Izuku would think, huh, it's kind of like King Kong. As Izuku would just decide to rush over to the robot as he would teleport closer to it using a shortcut that he had found. Izuku would end up getting there as he would summon an entire circle of gaster blasters circling around him as Izuku would then point his hand out just signaling for them to fire right towards the zero pointer as they would all fire as the just as the lasers or whatever you can call it would end up circling around each other and they would end up forming a massive beam going right towards the zero pointer's head as it would then land a direct hit as the zero pointer would then start to malfunction as sparks would end up going flying everywhere so there was now a massive gaping hole in the zero pointer the zero pointer's hand would end up removing its grip from the girl's body as it would then fall down However, right before they reached the ground, they would suddenly stop, as Izuku was there holding them before they could reach any further. He had used another shortcut to get there to catch the girl. There stood a black-haired girl st is now standing in front of him as Izuku had set her down. She would thank Izuku before walking off just needing to defeat more robots, as this girl was Momo Yayorosu. Her family just decided that she, or she rather, had decided that she didn't want to go through the entire process of being a chosen student, rather wanting to prove herself that she was worthy of being a class 1A student. However, her family had rigged it, so no matter what type of point she got, she was going to be in class 1A no matter what, as they were one of the most financial supporters of UA. 
So Isuku would end up walking off after hearing that the test had finished. Isuku would end up going home and cooking a nice meal for his mom, and she would then thank him. Izuku would then go up to his room before sleeping, waiting for the next day to arrive. Two weeks would end up passing, as Izuku would get a letter in the mail, reading, Dear Izuku, we have decided that you are worthy of being in Class 1A, as you have massed a sum of over 100 points, making you the second best first year in the entire competition or exams. So, welcome to Class 1A and UA. As Suku would smile down towards it, as he would just start laughing. <laughs> well, it looks like I made it. Time to dedicate half my life to working through this now. As Isuku had pretty much decided, well, I guess I'll become a hero now. Izuku would slowly roll out of his bed before looking down at his alarm clock. Yup, today was the day, his first day of high school and his first day at UA. He would begin a walk towards his closet, opening up the doors before grabbing his UA uniform that he had received in the mail. Putting it on, he would then grab his coat, putting it on over that. Walking down the hall after opening up his door, he would smell that breakfast had already been made. He would sit down next to a plate that was prepared for him by his mother, eating it as he would then bid his mother farewell, opening up their front door, and would then begin a walk towards the UA's campus. However, as Izuku was walking, a small white-haired child would end up bumping into him. Izuku would look down as both of their gazes would end up meeting. Izuku would as if have a message played right into his mind. The girl's eyes were pleading with him for him to help her, as Izuku wasn't sure what to do. Completely still, not knowing if he should help her, just completely walk on by. However, a strange man would end up walking out of the alleyway before grabbing the young girl's shoulder. Come on, Eerie. Let's go. You shouldn't have run off like that. Pulling her back towards the alleyway as she would then turn, looking back at Izuku now pleading even more as she would then begin walking with the man down the alleyway. Izuku would summon a, a bone in his hand as he would grab the man's shoulder. As the man would turn around, Izuku would then strike the man over the head with the bone, knocking him out. Izuku would then grab the girl before turning out of the alleyway, as two security guards would rush out to see Overhaul knocked out. Izuku would then hear them, Overhaul, what happened? However, there was no response, as the man was unconscious. Izuku would jump out of nowhere, summoning two gaster blasters, as they would then fire right at the two men, completely just obliterating them, as Izuku would then see even more people come out of nowhere. Izuku would begin to knock all of them out, as he would then ask the girl to follow him. He would go deep into this strange, mysterious white place, as a door would open up out of nowhere, as this door would end up being a just secret hideout into where Yuri was end up being kept, as that is the name Izuku had heard her being called. Izuku would look down to her and ask her what her name was. Uh, Yuri, she would say, as Izuku would nod his head. A lot of you guys say it's Eri, and that's how they pronounce it in the anime. Um, so, I like calling it Eerie, but it's Eri. I, I really couldn't care less, so I'm just going to be calling it Eerie. <laughs> Sorry if you guys don't like the way I pronounce the name. As it's completely alright, as I think I'm pronouncing it completely wrong, as the anime says Eerie, like I just said. So Izuku would nod his head towards the girl as they would continue on walking deep into it. She would point out small landmarks, just saying different things about how she was being tortured and all of that. As more information would end up being just coming out, Izuku would get madder and madder. How could someone do this to such a small, innocent girl like her? As Izuku would continue on seeing new people, as he would continue on knocking them out. Finally, when he was done, Izuku would then lift up his phone out of his pocket before calling the police. They would 
just immediately come flying down hearing about a case of a man in a fur coat. As this, of course, was overhaul, after all. They had gotten a picture of him, and he was wearing a fur coat, of course. And so, with him being one of their number one targets, mostly Sir Nighteye wanting to capture him, they would come flying. Sir Nighteye would also be informed, coming right down to where Zuku said his location was. Zuku would walk out of the alleyway, as the girl would follow behind him him. The police would then meet up Zuku, as Zuku would then explain what happened, how this girl had basically just looked at him, and how he knew she was in trouble, knocking out the man before going on a crazy spree of just knocking out people, and maybe killing a couple on the way too. The police would just say Zuku's in somewhat of trouble, but since he helped the police out a ton, now they were getting some bad publicity in the news for not capturing him already, they'll just let this event slide. Zuku would then see Sir Nighteye come out as he would then walk towards him. <sighs> well, good job. I'm kind of confused how you were able to just beat this person so easily how we couldn't do it after months of searching, but oh well. As Asuku would then walk on by, realizing that he had completely forgotten about his first day at UA, he would immediately rush off as the girl would end up following him. Many of the police officers would try to stop her, however, she was far too quick for them, as she would catch up with Izuku, who was standing outside of the gates at UA, marveling at how big they were. Opening up the gates, Izuku would continue on walking. There was no students in sight. It was quite strange. As Izuku would push open the doors, as he would start to walk around the campus. Again, it was completely silent and no one was around, as all that could be heard was the two people's footsteps. Izuku would end up seeing a big door with Class 1A written on it. Izuku would open up the door as there stood a very homeless looking man just looking at some papers. As the man would look towards Izuku before looking down at a watch. I suppose you're Izuku Midoriya. You're about eight hours too late. Class ended quite a little bit ago. What? I'm that late? Izuku had spent so much time searching throughout the hallways and everything in Overhaul's hideout that he'd completely neglected the fact that he still had to go to school. So Izuku would then explain what he had done, as Aizawa would then tell him that they had heard about it, and if Izuku could please head down towards Nezu's office, as Izuku would nod his head. As Izuku would then approach the office, he would open the door before sitting down. Nezu would look towards Izuku before laughing. Well, at least you have a good excuse for missing the entire first day of school. But that doesn't mean you should go unpunished, of course. I heard what you did. But since you happened to save this girl, I guess I'll let this slide. You should consider yourself lucky getting off twice today. Anyway, so, do you know what this little girl's name is? Um, it's Eerie, I think? The girl would nod her head as Nezu would look down towards her. So, do you know what we should do with her? As Izuku would shake his head, no. As Iri would then hug Izuku's leg as Nezu would then laugh. Well, I guess that settles it then. I guess she'll be living with you now. Izuku would nod his head as he would then take her home. Nezu would, before Izuku was able to walk out of the room, Nezu would tell Izuku how he now has to make up some work, which he'll have to come in on the weekend. Also, he'll send adoption papers towards his house for his mother to sign. Izuku would nod his head as he would then go back to his house. When he would open the door, it was completely silent, much like the halls of UA, and it was also completely dark. As Izuku would flick on the lights, there stood his mother holding a ruler in her hand. So... I heard you missed your entire first day of school, young man. What could you have possibly done to miss an entire school day? You better have a good excuse. As Izuku would jump back, now on the defensive, saying that I was saving this little girl here. Her name's Eerie. 
All of a sudden, Inko would then become a very nice, running towards the girl, just the awing at how cute she was. Oh, I guess that's a good enough excuse. So, what's she doing here? Well, you're gonna adopt her, and now she's becoming my little sister, I guess. Inko would just look towards Azuku like, really? You just happen to bring this on me without even asking me first? Well, I guess I'll have to accept it. I really can't do that, just leave this little girl hanging. As Izuku would sort of awkwardly laugh before sneaking off, as Inko would just be having so much attention towards Iri. Izuku sneaking off would then rush to his room, just wondering what the next couple of days are going to be like for his just school life and his hero career. Weeks would end up pass as Izuku would roll out of bed as he would then run over to his closet, getting changed before rushing off towards the UA campus. As he would arrive, he would sit down, wondering what today was going to be like. He had heard today was his first hero class, and he was somewhat excited. The first time he was excited to do something for quite a long time. As Asuku would start to stretch in his seat, knowing that he's going to have to be loose to perform to his liking, as the entire class would just be sitting, just bouncing up and down in their seats, waiting to see who their hero teacher could be. Do you think it could be All Might? No, it can't possibly be All Might. He's far too famous to be a small-time hero teacher to us Class 1A kids. As some of the class would agree, while most of them would end up disagreeing. Come on, we're Class 1A, give us some credit. All of a sudden, they were here stopping from down the hall. As the stomping would get closer and closer, and all of a sudden, the door would be slammed sliding open, and there would reveal a glowing yellow figure. This figure, of course, would be All Might, the number one hero, as many of the class would just look on in shock. Whoa, it is All Might! Many of them had said, yeah, it could possibly be All Might, but they didn't really believe it was true. They never thought such a busy person could somehow have extra time to be a teacher. Ha! Huh, class, quiet down, quiet, quiet down. We have a lot of work to begin today. Well, first off, remember the hero costumes you designed a couple of weeks ago during the first week of school? Well, the support course helped us out and designed them for you already. So, uh, here is a bunch of suitcases. You should see a number name tag on your desk, and that number will be the number your suitcase just happens to be. As Izuku would get up, walking over to his suitcase, as he would then open it up. It was a very simple blue just coat as he would look over th through the other parts of the hero costume. He had some basketball shorts under the coat and under all of that would reveal some pink Air Jordan sandals, which was a suggestion from one of you guys in the comment section. So I just decided to make you happy and just say, yup, he has those pink sandals, I guess, for the pink Air Jordan sandals just to make it a little extra comfy, I guess. So that would end up being Izuku's hero costume, basically mimicking Sans, as Izuku pretty much idolized him. It gave him a power, and also gave him a heck ton of confidence coming with it. So Izuku would sit back, closing his suitcase, as All Might would then tell them, Alright, there should be a map in both of the locker rooms. Please put your hero costumes on and then head over to... S to the city site A. The class would nod before rushing off towards the locker rooms. They all wanted to be and get there early so that they could start early and possibly have chance to do some extra activities with the number one hero, as they were quite excited. They've never seen such a high-ranking hero in person before. At least, most of them haven't. So, Izuku would rush off, putting on his hero costume, however, he would end up being the last one out there. As he would end up slowly walking out, the entire class would look annoyed at him, as they had basically just- he had caused them to wait for an extra couple of minutes. Izuku would just say, what? I was getting a drink of water. Why you guys look so mad? We're still gonna have time to finish the activity. It's not like we're not gonna see him all year. As some of the class would agree with him, while a heck ton of them were still angry that he caused them to shorten their time with the number one hero. However, this really was not the case. They were just being stupid. 
So, as All Might would look over, just seeing how annoyed the class was, he decided to draw the attention towards him so that Izuku wasn't just being the target of all that negative energy. Alright, class, so the first thing we are going to be doing is a Heroes vs. Villains test. I will be able to test your abilities based on what you do in this test. However, you don't have to have all that pressure on your backs, as this merely is just a test to see what your abilities now are. Doesn't matter if you're having a bad day today. So, let's begin. I've randomly chosen the teams already. So, the first team, Izuku Midoriya and Momo Yaoyorozu. The second team, Bakugo Katsuki versus Mineta. As the entire class would see that this was the team now, as Izuku would be told his team was the heroes while the other team was the villains, Izuku would walk off towards the building as All Might would tell them they can't head in until he gives them the go-ahead to walk into the building. Both Izuku and Momo would nod as she would then ask Izuku if he has a plan. Izuku would nod his head before slamming his fist down into his palm. Yeah, I got the perfect idea. We walk up to the top of the building and touch the bomb to give us the win. Momo would look directly at Izuku, just giving him the look as if, Are you serious? That's how you win. You go up to where they're hiding the bomb and you just... Touch it, the device. All you have to do is touch it. Of course, this is only a high school and it's a fake bomb or a fake device made out of paper mache, courtesy of the support course coming in clutch once again. So Izuku would just say, yeah, I suppose that's right. That's how we win. That's why it's the plan. As All Might would tell them they can head in, as Izuku would open the door walking cautiously around each corner. He knew Bakugo far too well to know he wasn't going to try to do a jump scare to catch Izuku off guard before pummeling him down into the ground. After all the things Izuku had done to Bakugo throughout the years, basically just bonking him on the head with his bones, which caused Bakugo just to be knocked out each time or just being dazed each time, which was basically just Izuku telling him to knock it off. As Izuku and Momo would end up making it to the third floor, they would end up seeing sparks come out from around the corner, as all of a sudden a fiery person would come right out, exploding towards them, as they would look on directly towards Izuku, jumping right at them. However, Izuku would dodge before summoning a bone in his hand, bonking Bakugo right on top of the head. Bakugo would grab his head in pain before looking back at Izuku. Why you- why the heck do you keep doing that? I don't know. It's quite fun as Izuku would then walk around a corner before appearing right behind Bakugo again, bonking him on the head again. How did you just get there? Oh, I took a shortcut, of course. As Bakugo would look on right towards Izuku before turning, pivoting his arm, before trying to send an explosion right towards Izuku. However, this wouldn't work. I'm right here, below you, as Bakugo would look down before Izuku would then lift up his arm, bonking Bakugo on the head one more time. That's it! You deserve this, Izuku! As Bakugo would then pull the pin on his grenade gauntlets, as All Might would yell at Bakugo how it was too dangerous. Izuku would end up grabbing Momo, saying that they need to take a shortcut before they would end up disappearing. As half of the third floor would end just, just being gone, completely obliterated by Bakugo's attack. As All Might would start yelling at Bakugo through the intercoms how it was so dangerous, as many of the students just didn't know where Izuku and Momo had gone. However, all of a sudden, they would appear out of nowhere from around a corner, as Izuku and Momo would now be on the fifth floor. Mineta, who was guarding the device, would end up looking on towards Momo, just in a greed and disgusting state, before jumping right at her as Izuku would lift up his bone that he was still holding in his hand, before slamming the bone right into Mineta's face, causing him to be sent flying, smashing him through the window, before falling down five stories, hitting the ground, as Momo would thank Izuku, before basically just saying, well, I guess he deserved it. 
I saw the t intention in his eyes, as Izuku and Momo would then touch the device, as they would then walk back towards the place where the heroes and the, sh the students and All Might were. All Might would congratulate them, as Momo would kind of just feel like she did nothing, she was useless in that f fight and scenario. As this would lower some of her confidence, as Izuku would just pat her on the back. Look, I'm sorry you didn't really get to do anything. I kind of just stepped up and blocked all of your opportunities. Sorry about that. Momo would nod her head, just saying, It's okay, Izuku. As Izuku would see Bakugo rushing in, yelling where the heck Izuku was. As All Might would glare towards Bakugo before completely eating into him, saying how dangerous and a fool Bakugo was for doing something so stupid. As Bakugo would storm off, having been just a suspended by a teacher right there, All Might was the number one hero after all, and he had the authority to just talk it over with Nezu, as he's sure Nezu would agree with him. As the day would end up passing, many of the students finishing their hero vs. villains test, as All Might would walk over towards Nezu's office, sitting down as Nezu would then look up at All Might. So, All Might, what do you wish to talk about? It's young Bakugo, sir. I fear he's drifting into a path of villainy. It's quite evident with the way he acts and his ego. Nezu would nod his head. Yes, I happened to see over the cameras what he had done towards Izuku and Momo. Quite a dangerous act, I would say. I also saw how you suspended him for it. A day of school, so he won't be coming back tomorrow. Hopefully he learns his lesson by then, but we might have to put him into some counseling to get his emotions in check. All Might would nod his head before walking off. Nezu had agreed with him like he had thought. It will be fine, Izuku. You have no worries. I asked your principal about it, and he said it was fine for your little sister Yuri to join you for a couple of days in class. Plus, it can be a learning experience, and she can get to meet new friends. Mom, this really isn't a good idea. I don't think it's safe for her to be around all those kids, especially Bakugo. Izuku's mother would wave him off before exiting throughout the door, as she had a very important business trip to get to and she wasn't about to miss her flight. Izuku had just decided to sit down and just take a breather. He really wasn't all for the idea of his little sister coming to UA to just watch him learn and study, as he just didn't think it was safe, especially with Bakugo around. It was just a big no-no for him. And plus, he was going on a field trip that exact same day, and yet his mother still thought it was fine. Izuku would ask Yuri to follow him as they would then exit out the door, as they would then make their way towards the UA campus. Once they would arrive, Izuku would walk Yuri through, giving her a small tour, before finally reaching Class 1A. Opening the door, the entire class's eyes would be on him, at least all of the people that were in the classroom quite early, that is. Izuku would just ask Yuri to follow him, as she would. Izuku would then sit down at his desk as Iri would then sit down right next to him on the floor, as Izuku wouldn't really like that, just saying, here, Iri, take my seat, as she would sit down in his seat with Izuku sitting down next to him. Ida would walk over to Izuku and ask who the person sitting next to him was. Oh, it's my little sister, Iri, as Ida would nod his head, so, why is she here in class? You know it's not safe for her to be here, right? You know, with all the crap that's been going on. Izuku would nod his head as he would just start to hold his forehead. Yeah, it's been a real pain. My mother has to go on a business trip, and so I had to take care of her. And I can't just leave her at home, so the best option was taking her here. Ida would nod his head before going to sit down. While the rest of the students would end up piling in, many of them would circle around Izuku as Iri would end up hiding just down in Izuku's seat, not liking all the attention that was surrounding her. Aisawa would then enter the room, telling for all the students to sit down as his gaze would end up meeting over towards where the little child was. 
Izuku would look over at Aizawa, who would then nod at him. He had been just heard about what was happening with Nezu. So, class, today we are going to be heading to the USJ. Please head down to the locker rooms and put on your hero costumes, and then head out to the bus. Izuku, I know what you're doing, I can take Eerie, as Izuku would nod his head as he would then leave the rest of the boys down to the boys' locker room. Eerie would end up slowly following with Aizawa, not quite sure if he was a safe person or not. This had only been a couple of weeks, well, maybe a month and a half after the overhaul fight, so she hadn't fully trusted humanity just yet. She thought almost everyone was someone like overhaul, as her mind had just been twisted and manipulated by the cruel human being that was overhaul. So, with the very kind people that were Izuku and Inko, if they trust Aizawa here, she might as well trust him too. So, she would end up slowly following behind him, as they would then reach down to the bus port, where many of the students had already been, as Aizawa decided to take a slower walk and pace down towards it. As always, the students would then pack up onto the bus, as it would then reveal Izuku was the last one left. Izuku would slowly walk back onto the bus, as the class would then stare at him, with many of them asking him, Why are you so late? As Izuku would just not have an answer for this, it's something he didn't really bother to answer. Izuku would sit down next to Iri as the bus would then speed off towards the USJ building. Izuku would then look out the window to see a massive circular dome building in the distance, as a couple of minutes would pass as the bus would then pull up to that very same dome. They would all step outside of the bus as they would see a massive dome standing in front of them. It looked huge, however it was nothing compared to the size of the UA school building. As they would all be looking up, they would hear a voice come out from the top of where the doors were. Hello, Class 1A! Welcome to the USJ! Some of you may know I'm the Hero 13, a rescue hero, and that's the training we're going to be doing. Rescue? Well, not exactly. Today we're going to be just learning all about the different places that we're going to be doing some rescuing in. I was able to get a couple of people end up coming out here, mostly hero friends, to help you all practice your rescuing, and they'll tell you tips and all of that. However, that's going to be tomorrow. Today, we're going to be learning the surroundings. The entire class would nod, as 13 would then push open the doors, revealing how big the inside was. Sure, it looked big on the outside, but it looked completely massive on the inside. It was crazy. As they would all look around in just amazement, one of the students would then point something out. Is there supposed to be fake villains here too? I know you said we're just going to be looking at the surroundings and not doing any rescue work, so why would there be fake villains here now? Thirteen and Aizawa's head would both jolt straight towards where the finger was pointing, and true to the word, there was a portal opening up as villainous people would end up stepping outside of the portal. Aizawa and Thirteen would both yell for the students to get back, Aizawa would tell Thirteen to protect the students as he would jump down and start fighting the massive horde of the villains below. However, Aizawa would end up easily being outnumbered, but this was not without taking out many of them. While Aizawa was buying time, the students were all just frozen, not knowing what to do. Izuku was just standing there, not really paying attention, still looking around at everything. Thirteen would end up telling the students to run outside the door, however, right as they were about to open it, a purple portal would open up. Not so fast there, young students. <laughs> well, I guess I could call you that, but no matter. Why don't I just say you're not going to be able to escape this place for a little while, at least not alive, that is, as this purple-looking portal thing would then open up beneath them as many of the students would then fall through it, however leaving a very small select group that were still up at the top. These of course being the people that had easily been able to dodge this. Izuku had grabbed Iri and dodged it, while 13 and some of the other students had also been able to dodge it, just completely outside the range of the portal, while a bulk of the students had just disappeared. While the portal thing would disappear, Izuku would then ask Ida 
for something, as Ida would ask what he could possibly need right now. Izuku would then tell Ida to just to try to buy time, as Izuku would then take a shortcut, returning in the office of Nezu. Hey, Nezu, we sort of have a problem here. Nezu would ask what, as Izuku would say back at the USJ, there happens to be some villains. Well, I gotta go. Please send the heroes quickly. Izuku would take a shortcut back, as he would see Ida holding Iri, which was another thing he had also told him. Thanks for just protecting her, I guess. As Ida would nod his head, as some of the villains would start scaling the walls. While Izuku was gone, the villains had managed to take down Aizawa. Izuku would look down at the villains, just wondering what they could possibly be wanting with these select five people that were standing up at the staircase. Izuku would lift his hand up, as many bones would then surround it, with Izuku pointing his hand down after that. The bones would then scatter, flying right back down towards all of the people, as many of them would try to dodge, but they were far too quick, as the bones would then crash into them, knocking many of them out. However, many of the weaker ones would sustain many, just much worse injuries from these bones at the impact. As Izuku would decimate the army in front of him, he would look on to see the Nomu standing there. He would then have a portal put under him, as the rest of the group would end up being dispersed by this portal. Izuku would be standing there with Iri by his side, as Izuku would look on to see three villains standing in front of him. A massive-looking bird monster, a blue-haired person that seemed to have some obsession with hands, and the purple thing that had opened up a portal. As this hand person would then look over towards Izuku before putting out a very shaky finger before yelling at the bird monster to just charge right at Izuku and to kill both of those brats. The Nomu would charge at him as Izuku would dodge, trying to grab Iri, but had barely missed by just an inch, as the bird monster would then go right towards Iri, about to throw a punch. Izuku would barely just to take a shortcut right there to grab Iri and push her back, as Izuku would look on towards the villain in just complete disgust. He had gone so low to attack a child. Sure, he was attacking these students now, but what's the point of attacking some in innocent child that has done no wrong? Izuku's eye or Izuku's eye would then start to glow and illuminate a very blue looking fire. Izuku, however, before being able to do anything crazy, his hand would be clenched by the girl standing next to him. Izuku would look down to see Iri holding tightly to him as Izuku would his power would then fade back away. Izuku would still glare towards the villains, however, all of a sudden, he would then look down as the pressure around his hands and body would then start to loosen. There was a villain with a knife directly in the back of Eerie, as the villain would then have his face smashed down into the dirt, as Izuku would look on in horror and shock as his little sister was now laying there with a knife through her chest. Izuku would tell her that it was going to be okay, however she was going in and out of consciousness and was in severe pain. Izuku would lay her back down, and now with no distractions, Izuku's eye would full on just brighten as he would activate soul manipulation, going right on to Shigaraki, the Nomu, and Kirogiri. As Izuku would lift out his hand, he would then summon many bones as they would fly towards Shigaraki and the Nomu. They weren't able to move at all, being held down by Izuku as the barrage of bones would lay into them, completely just obliterating any hope they had of beating him. As Izuku, now in basically a rage, would then summon gaster blasters all around them before yelling for them to fire as they would all fire directly towards them, completely decimating the Nomu standing next to Shigaraki. However, Shigaraki was barely dodged by this, as Shigaraki standing there had one of his arms completely just disintegrated, as his arm, left arm, however, was still intact, as his right arm was just a now nub and shoulder, as his left arm still remaining there, he would yell for Kirogiri to get them out of here, however, Kirogiri couldn't move. I... 
can't move. Isuku would look on straight towards Shigaraki before jumping right at him, punching him across the face, before uppercutting him right in the jaw as he would jump back before letting go of the soul manipulation as his eye would then fade back to his normal color, jumping right back at Shigaraki, however, it revealed that they were gone. Izuku would rush back to Eerie, however, he saw that she was quickly bleeding out. He would take off his hero coat or his coat that he was wearing before tightly wrapping it around her body to hopefully keep in her body heat while also just keeping in that blood so it doesn't completely drain out of her. Izuku would rush over to see that Ida was standing right by the stairs as he had made it he had made it back. Izuku would tell Ida that he needs to go around and to save as many people as possible as he's not going to be here. Also, the hero should manage to get here any time, as Ida would nod his head completely confused on what the frantic Izuku's questions were. Izuku would take a shortcut right to Recovery Girl's office before dropping off the eerie right in front of her on a bed, before taking a shortcut back as he would just start to run around saving his entirety of his class. All Might would bust into the USJ to reveal the entire class just in a circle wondering what had just happened. They were all standing around talking in a pile of bodies of the knocked out villains, making sure that none of them were able to get away. All Might and the rest of the UA staff being heroes, had gotten there, they started to look around, making sure that no villains were still hiding out, before calling ambulances and police as they would all get there very, very fast. Getting there, they would then treat many of the injured students, if they had gotten injured, of course, as Izuku would then leave off to Recovery Girl's office to see the state of his little sister. He had gotten there to see Recovery Girl standing over her before looking back at Izuku, just demanding what had possibly gotten this little girl into such trouble, as Izuku would tell her that his mother had to go on a business trip and Nezu approved her to stay in his class for a couple days with him as he couldn't just leave her at home. Recovery Girl would just face palm at knowing that the stupid actions had caused something like this, as she would say that Eerie was going to be alright, but it might take a couple of days for her to fully recover. With Eerie's stay at the hospital over, Izuku could finally have his break begin, as Nezu had given the entire UA a month off so that he, along with the teachers, could deal with what the USJ incident had caused. When that month was over, Izuku and his class would head back into the classroom, knowing that the UA Sports Festival was just around the corner. As a week would end up passing from there, as they would all just be learning about what they're going to be doing during the U or the UA Sports Festival, as the day would finally come. A Monday, since they were back from from their break, Izuku would be chilling in his seat, waiting for Aizawa to walk in. As Aizawa would walk in, he would then point up to the board before smiling at his class. Well, class, you all know what day it is. Hopefully you guys don't get killed. You, the first years are always targeted by the rest of the class. Or, not the first years. I mean, the class 1A is always targeted. So I would suggest you watching each other's backs, as the entire class would nod their heads as Aizawa would then lead them down to the buses. So they would then get onto a bus before heading out to the Coliseum where the U a sports festival was being held. They would all get off and go into a special entrance where they would then be greeted by the Class 1A locker rooms, where it would then divide into boys or girls, and it would then feed into a waiting room where they would then just be sitting and waiting for the next event to begin. So, once they were all changed, they would all just be sitting in the waiting room, waiting for something to happen. All of a sudden, the speakers would then sound, Attention, Class 1A, you may now head out onto the field. All of a sudden, the doors would then start to shift open, as the class would then get prepared before walking out onto the field. The crowd surrounding them would then erupt into cheers, extremely loud from what they had been to Class 1B and down. Many of the classes would just be snickering, wondering how come they got such less response than what Class 1A had gotten. 
This would, of course, make them want to target them even more. Their teachers have said that Class 1A is probably feeling like the big shots now, and they gotta take out their anger a little bit, and possibly make them just go down a little bit, so that they're not the big shots of the school anymore. So, many of the classes were just staring devilishly at Class 1A. However, they wouldn't really mind it. Izuku would just be staring at them before lifting up his finger and smiling at many of the classes there, which they would just find kind of weird. However, after that, Midnight would then walk up to the podium before asking Bakugo Katsuki to step up onto the podium. He would walk up before stepping up, where Midnight would then tell him to give a speech. I'm gonna win. None of you will be able to stop me, Bakugo would say as the entire crowd would just stare on in shock, not knowing how to respond. While many of the classes below, even some of Class 1A, would start to boo Bakugo as the crowd would then follow shortly after this. As Midnight would push Bakugo back to where Class 1A was, she would then tell what the first and second event would be. So, the first event's going to be a race around this Colosseum. We temporarily set up a racetrack for you all, and there will also be some obstacles, I would say. We have a very good hero team that's allowing us to do this, so I would just like to thank them before it begins. Also, the second event I will explain in more detail once the first one is finished. So, please head over to the starting line, as Midnight would then point over towards where a door was, as all of the classes would then just pile into this very narrow doorway, crowding on top of each other, as the doors would then very slowly creak open. Many of the people would start to file out, as many people would start being kicked and shoved and punched to the side, as Isuku would just not wanting to do this would take a shortcut out, appearing right behind or right after where the door had just opened. As Izuku would then start to walk along, waiting for something interesting to happen. As Izuku would see these zero pointers once again, he would not even do anything, seeing that Bakugo and Todoroki, who were in first and second, would just completely obliterate them, and sure enough, he was right. However, Izuku was directly under where the Zero Pointer was going to land, so Izuku, to save himself, took a shortcut, as he would then end up right at the outside of the exit, just seeing as it wasn't worth his time to continue on the race, and it just didn't seem like much fun. So, appearing right so outside of the exit, taking a shortcut, he would then walk in as the entire crowd would just wonder how Izuku did that. Does he have some sort of teleportation quirk? Most of them would end up wondering this, as the crowd, who would leave their shock, would start to cheer. There was the person that had just gotten first and was now the one seed in the next competition. Bakugo would end up getting second and Todoroki in third. However, unbeknownst to Bakugo, he didn't know he had gotten second. So when he entered into the Colosseum expecting that he was first, he would end up looking up onto the board to see that he was second. He would wonder how the hell did he get second when he clearly saw that he entered first. Did that had half and half bastard somehow enter before him? Well, that wasn't the case. As he would look over to see Izuku just resting up against one of the sidewalls, waiting for all of the other students to end up passing. As Bakugo would storm over to Izuku, Izuku just wouldn't mind it. As Bakugo would come even closer, looking like he was about to just throw an attack at Izuku, Izuku would then appear behind Bakugo, smacking him on the head with the bone. Come on, Bakugo, haven't you learned already? You should probably tone down your ego a little bit before you hurt someone, as Bakugo would then just sit down just in anger. As the entirety of the other students would end up finishing, the top 42 of them would end up making it onto the cavalry battle. So, Izuku would start to stretch, wondering what this battle could possibly mean. Midnight would go back up under the newly built podium, which had to be destroyed, but then was rebuilt again, because it just had to be rebuilt for some reason. So, this time, she would end up coming up for speaking to them that there will be the cavalry battle, and this battle will work with the first 
person or the person who got first in the race having a 10 million point headband, as she would then explain the headband system and the rules of it. Izuku would look around, seeing that almost everyone was staring directly at him, and would just decide he doesn't need a team. So Izuku would just ask Midnight if he can go 1v all of the people around him, as Midnight would look on reluctantly at Izuku before saying, well, I guess so. It's not advised you do, as you'll probably just be destroyed instantly by the entire teams around you, but if you're feeling confident, I'm all for it. As the crowd would then cheer, hoping that something interesting was about to happen, seeing how Izuku somewhat seemed cocky in this, they wondered how strong could Izuku really be with his teleportation cork. So, when the cavalry battle would begin, Izuku, sitting there with his headband around him, would then summon a ton of bones, basically an army, surrounding him, as all of the teams that would approach him would just be bombarded with with bones, as they would circle back, fighting the people that were trying to get him, as when they would peel off, the bones would then peel off as well, going for people that were newly trying to attack him. As Izuku had so many bones, there was almost no weak spots, and pushing through the cage of bones that were surrounding Izuku was basically impossible. So Izuku would sit there until the 30 minutes were up, and once they were up, he would stand up as the bones would then just disperse. Izuku would start to stretch again, as he had decided to just take a little rest while he was there to regain some of his energy that he happened to lose during the race. As Izuku would be standing there, Midnight would then announce that the cavalry battle had ended, and that all of them can now head back to the waiting rooms, while the next event would be just calculated, and in around 10 minutes, they will then tell you what that event is. As the break would end, Izuku would head back into the field, as he would look on to see Midnight now standing on the grass, as a massive arena had been built. As Midnight was also now watching as the cement hero would end up building her a little watching area so that she can be just the referee for the 1v1 matches. As that would then finish, she would then announce the 1v1 tournament was about to begin, and the first two contestants are Izuku versus Shinso, so if they could please step up right now. As Izuku and Shinso would end up stepping up onto the arena, Izuku would stare on directly at Shinso. As the match would begin, Izuku would see as Shinso would start to just talk towards Izuku, trying to get an answer out of him. I can't believe you're one of those Class 1A rejects, huh? As Izuku would answer, you kinda talk like Bakugo. That's quite strange. You don't look like Bakugo that much. As Shinso would think that he had gotten Izuku right into his trap, but the moment he tried to brainwash him, it simply didn't work. As for some reason, Izuku was immune to brainwashing. I don't know why, he just was. So Shinso, not able to brainwash him, would charge directly at Izuku, going for a punch which Izuku would end up dodging before pushing Shinso down to the ground. Whoa, you should probably watch yourself, you're gonna get your clothes all dirty sitting on the ground like that. As Shinso would get up now even angrier at how Izuku was treating a fight, would charge Izuku once more. Well, this was fun. I'm just- I've kind of gotten bored of this. As Izuku was about to do something, Shinso would end up ducking, going out of the way so that he wouldn't even touch Izuku. As Izuku realizing he didn't have to dodge and he wouldn't have thrown a hit, he would then go right at Shinso. Hi, you finally decided to charge at me. Shinso would then get into a stance about to try to pull some martial art thing on Izuku. Izuku would jump up over Shinso as his eye would then start to glow. Izuku would then see Shinso lift up before going down and falling onto the grass below. Midnight would be weirded out by this, wondering how Shinso had just been picked up by this, as she would just think it was possibly just one of the things Izuku could do with his cork. So, she would then give the match win to Izuku via a ring-out victory. 
the quarterfinals would end up being Izuku versus Todoroki. As Izuku would step out onto the field, Todoroki would stare directly into Izuku's eyes, basically trying to send a message that he was going to kill Izuku in this fight, as Izuku really wouldn't mind this, as the match would then begin. Todoroki would launch himself right towards Izuku before slamming his fi his fist down onto the arena below, as Ice would then shoot out from where his fist had hit the ground, charging right towards Izuku. However, he would summon a single bone which would fly right towards this ice, shattering it into hundreds of little pieces, as Izuku would then summon an army of bones as they would all very lightly tap the ice, which would somehow cause them to be sent flying back at Todoroki. Sending them flying back, they would all implant them into Todoroki's arms and legs, along with his clothing, basically as these small tiny wounds would then begin to leak blood. Todoroki would put ice over his arm, basically just trying to cool down and stop the bleeding from happening. So Todoroki would charge at Izuku once more, before slamming his foot down this time, sending another iceberg. This time he would try to just envelop Izuku in this iceberg instead of going for a head-on attack that could possibly pierce Izuku with the tip of the iceberg. However, this wouldn't work either, as Izuku would do the exact same thing, causing even more ice to implant itself into Todoroki. As Todoroki, finally starting to feel the burden of his injuries, would start to feel the frostbite take into him as well, as the ice around his arms and legs had finally started to get to him only after a couple of minutes, as Todoroki would start to wobble back and forth on his legs as his vision would start to blink in and out, as Todoroki would then fall down to the ground unconscious as Suzuki would be awarded the victory because of the knockout that he dealt to Todoroki, as Todoroki would then be carted off towards Recovery Girl's office so that he could be healed and hopefully his injuries will recover. As Izuku would just walk back, being congratulated that he's heading on to the semifinals. The semifinals would end up beginning as it was Izuku versus Ida. As Izuku versus Ida was quite quick, Ida would end up going for just a speed route, trying to attack Izuku very quickly and rapidly. However, Izuku would dodge a single attack, causing Ida to fly out of bounds, not having something to propel himself backwards, causing Izuku to be awarded a ring out victory. So the next event was going to be the finals, Izuku versus Bakugo. Bakugo had been waiting for something like this to happen ever since Izuku had gotten his cork, as Izuku basically had just been tarnishing Bakugo's reputation and ego ever since Izuku had gotten his cork, so Bakugo just wanted to put him down in his place once and for all. So, when both of them would step up, Bakugo would glare at Izuku as the match would begin. Bakugo would propel himself using his explosions directly at Izuku, who would then dodge, summoning two gaster blasters right down at his feet, which would then send lasers right towards Bakugo. Bakugo would use his explosions to dodge these as they would then charge right at each other. Izuku would summon a bone in his hand before slamming it down on to Bakugo's arm. Bakugo would feel the pain of this as his own bone was starting to crunch under the pressure from Izuku's blow. Bakugo would jump back, deeming that his arm had had enough of the pain, before charging right back at Izuku, as their blows would end up landing, either blocking it or landing with another blow, as they would continue this on for another five minutes, as both of them had begun to get pretty tired, and Izuku decided to end this, as Bakugo would as well, charging at each other, as Izuku would then redirect his attack using his bones, to right into the ground, causing massive amounts of smoke and just debris to be sent flying up into the air. Before Bakugo could do anything, he would run head on into this smoke cloud as he would then fall over, tripping on a rock, hitting his head on the ground, causing him to go unconscious from this, as Izuku would then disappear, being nowhere to be found. There was no 
signs or that Bakugo had fired his explosion, so what could have happened to cause Suzuku to disappear? Everyone saw the smoke cloud to erupt before Bakugo had even done anything, so what had happened? As everyone thought Izuku had just been wrung out, they would start to search the arena. With their eyes, they would see nothing was there. Where could Izuku have gone? Midnight would then say that Bakugo had been awarded the ring out victory before saying that the podium would now be put on. As Izuku nowhere to be found, Bakugo would be given first, Ida would be given second, and Totoro would end up being given third for some reason, as they would all just try to play it off, as the staff would then start to just have everyone go back to UA, and many of the crowd just would forget about it, being as maybe it was some sort of stunt or something. So, once everyone was home, the teachers would head to where Nezu's office was, as he would redirect them to a meeting room. Many of them who had sawned on the TV just were confused. Where could Izuku have gone? Now, to know that, we'd have to travel back to that time. Izuku redirected his bones into the ground, causing debris to fly up into the air. This is where he would end up taking a shortcut back to his house, as he would end up seeing his mother and Eerie there. He would tell them he was going to go on a couple of trips just to do something for a while, and that he was going to leave UA for a little bit to just experiment with different things. Both his mother and Eerie were directed not to say anything to UA if they asked him about it. Just say they don't know what happened, as they would respect Izuku's wishes, who would then head out. Where could Izuku have gone? I, I don't know, Nezu, but the student said there was someone at the USJ who had a warping cork or something that could make someone travel through a portal. Could that possibly have something to do with it? Y yes, it could. Cause he bunch of smoke ended up arising, so possibly in that time a portal opened up beneath him, so possibly villains could have kidnapped him. Maybe that's what happened to him, Nezu would say, as the majority of the heroes there would then agree with him. Well, anyway, we should hopefully just get past this right now. We shouldn't have all the students worrying about it, so I suggest we start the internships for them quite soon. Soon as tomorrow, possibly. Nezu would nod his head as the next day would come. The students would come into class, all but Izuku, as many of them would then start to get worried, not knowing what had happened to Izuku. Many of them would ask Bakugo what could have happened, and Bakugo would just say he has no idea. So Aizawa, like, acting like nothing happened, would start to pass out slips that had all these different hero places that just asked them to come and join them, as Aizawa would then explain the hero internships. Now a couple days would pass as we now see the students now with their internships and the heroes next to them as they were basically acting like a sidekick just to get some experience on the front lines. So, many of them would actually travel to Hosu City, as that is one of the biggest crime places in the entire area. So, with many of them there, they were all just wandering around, stopping crime with their certain heroes. However, on one far side of town, a fire erupted, as hundreds of Nomus would end up spewing out of a purple portal, just like the one from the USJ. However, Endeavor would end up being there to take care of them, but there was far too many for just him to take care of, causing for many other heroes to end up running towards there, and many other students to be in that dangerous area too. So, and we cut to see someone standing up on a rooftop, looking at all the smoke and fire coming over the, the forest line, as he was standing up on a hill that looked over the city. He would then disappear and then reappear on top of a rooftop, now looking down as he would see someone with a knife to a hero's neck. Izuku would jump down, staring directly at the person in front of him before stepping forward. I suggest you don't take another step. I've heard about you. You have a blue eye, I suppose. I guess that's where you got your name. As a, this now a person looking back would see a bright blue flaming eye coming out from a all black mask surrounding it, as the figure would then just laugh. Well, I suppose you know who I am, Stain. That doesn't matter. You shouldn't be killing people like this. It's 
far too stupid for you to be doing something like this. You're wasting your power, Stain, killing unworthy heroes in your own eyes. Well, you should just be trying to change the society. Scare tactics like this aren't going to work. They only see you and fear you because of what you've done killing their precious heroes. This figure would say as Stain would then laugh, turning around before throwing a knife at the person behind him. However, the person was long gone and was now right in front of Stain. I suggest you don't do that again, as the person now had a bone to Stain's neck, as Stain would then just look down, wondering, what is this gonna do? You'll see, as Izuku would then just make a motion as if trying to lift it up, as Stain would jump back, right into a swing that Izuku had done. As Stain would wonder how Izuku had gotten there, all of a sudden two dragon skeleton head looking things would appear from nowhere before firing a laser at him as Stain would then be sent flying back into a dumpster behind him. As this now figure known as Izuku would be walking forward towards Stain. I'll let you go this one time, Stain. Hopefully you decide to change before I have to finish you off once and for all. That's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be killing them, but rather giving them a second chance. If they don't comply, then you should be killing them. That's quite simple, or well, easier th response. As Izuku would then walk out of the alleyway, noticing that Ida was standing on the ground, or sitting on the ground unconscious. As Izuku would look over towards Stain, wondering what this could mean, Stain would just say that that boy came in and attacked him, as Izuku would then realize. He had read something in the paper about some boy's, or some brother's hero had been just... <laughs> horribly injured, as this person would of course be Ida's brother, as Izuku would just realize what had happened. Iz Izuku would then grab Ida by the arm, dragging him out of the alleyway towards the fire. Izuku would then appear next to a Nomu, where we now jump forward. Izuku, standing now next to this Nomu, would easily take care of it, setting down Ida before jumping away to watch what was unfolding was quite the strange sight indeed, as there was hundreds of Nomu bodies and carcasses just laying everywhere while heroes were breathing heavily after just taking out such a big army, and they were now trying to take care of the fire that was surrounding all of them. Izuku would decide not to linger much about this, as he would then jump off, wondering what he should be doing now. However, one of those students, named Momo Yaoyorozu, before seeing tons of the gnomes jump away back into a portal, had placed a tracker on them, as she would go back to UA a couple days later to tell Nezu about it after her hero internships were over. Um, Nezu, I have something to tell you. What is it? Yaoyorozu. I placed a tracker on one of the gnomus that managed to escape. Do you think this could possibly lead anything to finding Izuku? I overheard you and the other heroes talking about how he might be captured by the villains, so I decided to try to do something about it. Nezu would nod his head before asking to see the tracking device, as Momo would then pull it out of her pocket, giving it to Nezu, as he would then look down at it. Huh. So I guess this might be the place Izuku could be located at. Good job, Yayorozu. I'll talk to this I'll talk to you about this later. Please go back home. It's much late now. You should probably get some rest. As tomorrow's gonna be a hell of a training day for you all. As Nezu would then walk away going to the teacher's lounge, where he would then see the teachers talking about their situation with Izuku. Well, Momo Yaoyorozu, one of the students in Class 1A, managed to put a tracking device on one of the Nomus. So this could possibly have a clue on where Izuku could be. As the heroes would jump forward, looking at the tracking device, seeing that it was a red blinking dot on a location just on the outskirts of Hosu City. As All Might would then immediately start countering up plans so that they can go and attack it. As they would all be thinking about this, All Might would even think even further. Hmm. 
I actually think there could be two locations. One where they keep these beast things, then an off location. Well, I suppose I could be right and wrong. Who knows? As we now cut to see Izuku walking along the streets, looking around. He was on the outskirts of Hosu City, just bored out of his mind, not sure what to do. He still had his costume on, and pretty much no one was out at night, so he didn't bother changing into more civilian clothes, as he didn't want to be spotted either since there was tons of missing posters around. So Izuku would be walking around before he ended up seeing a random doorway in the middle of nowhere. Izuku, deciding to take his chances, would open up this doorway, as it would then reveal a bar with someone sitting there who just happened to have blue hair. Izuku realized what he had stumbled upon, but would just act like nothing happened, strolling in before sitting down, as both of the people in there were now staring at him. As Izuku, sitting down, would then look over, at the person standing behind him and would ask for a glass of water. As both of them confused on who Izuku was, one of them with the blue hair would then speak up. Are you one of the new recruits? Izuku playing along would just say, yeah, I think so. I'm not quite sure. This place was quite hard to find. Now the person in blue hair would then introduce himself, saying that he was Shigaraki, before explaining all his views on heroes in the society, explaining how they wronged him and that he must take revenge on the entirety of the society, most especially All Might. As Azuku would listen in, as two people would end up walking in much further after this, this of course being Dobby and Toga, as Shigaraki would then just join them as if giving them an initiation speech sort of like he had done to Azuku just a couple of minutes ago. So Izuku sitting there in this bar, just wondering what was happening, and all of a sudden a knock on the door would end up being heard. Izuku would walk over for opening the door, as there stood All Might standing in the doorway, smiling right down onto Izuku, as All Might would then say, pizza delivery, before jumping in about to punch Izuku right in the face, who had dodged the attack, jumping back out of the way, as All Might would then jump in, grabbing all of them, as a wood hero would then jump in, capturing every single person inside the bar, it's mostly Izuku, of course, having been captured too, being right at the doorway. However, Izuku would then somehow get out of the capture, causing the wood hero to be confused, but would then focus on the rest of the people that he had captured as Izuku would then decide to take off his costume so that he wouldn't get captured again, thought, thinking that he was a villain. So Izuku now just walking around, he would end up seeing a weird gray goopy portal open up as Izuku was peering in through the back window of the bar. Seeing this weird goopy gray portal looking thing open up as All For One would then step out of the portal before looking on at All Might. All Might would jump towards All For One going for a punch but All For One was far too quick for All Might even after both of their injuries. So All Might would go on a hurry and just flurry of attacks going insane. However, All For One would simply and easily dodge every single attack All Might threw, as All For One would then start to laugh. Come on, All Might. You are a fool. You didn't even bother to evacuate the city. All of these missed punches are hundreds of casualties. You're just a fool, All Might. Think about what the news is going to think. They're going to start siding with us. Seeing that heroes are only destructive people that cause harm to everyone else. All Might wouldn't care about All For One's words, continuing on his attack and his offensive against All For One. However, with a quick blow, All For One would punch All Might right in his weak spot, sending him flying back into a building, as the building would then topple onto All Might. As many heroes would then jump in trying to look for him, and there they would end up finding his body, completely destroyed by all of the bricks that had fallen on him. 
Izuku would then see All for One about to reach out his hand towards everyone else, all of the heroes there, as weird, strange things would start to come out of his hands, jumping right towards the heroes that were trying to look for All Might's body. Izuku would jump in, sending a gaster blaster that would end up blowing a laser right through the these weird things that outstretched from All For One's hand, All For One would look over towards Zuku before smiling. So, it's the boy with the strange, unique power. Shigaraki told much about you, how strong you were and how you were able to defeat a Nomu meant for All Might within a couple of seconds. That's quite the feat indeed. Well, let's see if you can handle this. All For One would jump towards Zuku after for it would reveal that Izuku had easily dodged this attack, as All For One now on the offensive would be much like All Might as the roles had reversed. Izuku now would easily be able to dodge all of All For One's attacks, as All For One would quickly get frustrated that he wasn't landing anything. Izuku would then smile towards All For One. Oh, you're getting frustrated. You were so confident just a quick second ago. What could have changed your mind so quickly? All for One would continue on his attack, as Izuku would then jump back, finally about to use his full power, as a, a fury of, or a flurry of bones would then be sent flying towards All for One, parading him with all these bones and just berating him right in, as each of the bones would come in waves, hitting him and hitting him, slowly breaking him down, as Gaster Blasters would then be summoned all around him, sending many lasers towards him. As Izuku would then repeat this process, sending hundreds of bones towards him and then using his gaster blasters, as the quick attacks would end up leaving All for One completely just destroyed. His helmet had been completely ripped off of his head as he was now struggling to breathe on the ground. As Izuku would look down towards All for One, who was now begging for mercy. I've heard about you, All for One, and now you're begging for mercy, just like your victims did. As Izuku would raise a bone in his hand before letting it drop right on to All for One's head. As Izuku would ask All for One how many people he killed in his lifetime. All for One, trying to somehow manage to get back up, would start to laugh as if about to have a second wave of power come over him, saying, Oh, I don't know, a couple thousand maybe. <laughs> Like ever, probably over 200,000 people stealing their corks. And you think I don't have a regeneration cork? All for one trying to get Izuku somehow be less confident in his abilities so that he could scare Izuku off so, he, so his doctor could jump in and take him so he could heal again. However, that wouldn't be the case. As Izuku would start counting, 200,000 bones isn't quite an... That's quite a lot. I don't think I have the power to do that just yet. As Izuku would then snap his fingers as tons of bones would just land, falling right on top of All for One. A hand pops out of the pile of bones as weird gray goo starts coming out of the fingers. It then goes towards the League of Villains who are being tied up by some of the heroes behind Izuku. As they then fall through this goop as if it's some sort of portal disappearing. As All for One would barely manage to pull himself out of the pile of bones, but would then collapse back into it, not able to stand anymore, having used all of his energy up just trying to survive from how hard the impact was. So heroes would come flying towards there to hopefully just try to tie him up and put court-canceling handcuffs on him. Some of the heroes would walk up to Izuku and say, you, you know you could have died there, why would you do that? somehow managed to defeat All Might. Why do you think you could have beaten him? Izuku would just shake his head. I did beat him. Plus, if you're about a saying, it's illegal for me to use my cork. My powers are beyond your understanding. It's not exactly a cork. It's something else. Anyways, do you know where I could find Nezu, the principal at UA? I wish to speak with him. As the hero would just be left speechless as Izuku would walk off towards the UA building. He would then arrive walking through the empty lonely halls as many of the teachers had left to go fight in 
thing and to somehow rescue Zuku after they thought he was stuck in the villain hideout being kidnapped. So when Izuku was there, he would end up seeing Nezu in his office, looking at a TV, staring up at, at it, just watching the news. Hello, Nezu. Aha, Izuku. I've been expecting your arrival. Please sit down. I find it quite impressive you were able to beat all for one, for it's sad that we've lost another. A great hero, in fact. All my, of course. It's tough, but hopefully... We manage to keep all for one under seal so that he doesn't manage to escape. That's not the thing, Nezu. All Might explained to me his power, and he explained to me all for ones. All for one can transfer his power into someone else's, while All Might could too. Now that All Might's dead, this disrupts the power. All for one needs to be killed before he can get in contact with anyone else. He's killed thousands of people. Who knows what types of quirks he has that could possibly transfer his quirk into someone else that could somehow get far more powerful than him. Remember, All for One was injured. So the only way we could do this is if killing All for One and say he somehow died in prison. It'd be a cover-up. However, it'd be extremely shady. Nezu would think for a moment, wondering if Izuku was right before nodding his head. Yes, I do believe that would actually have to be the case. But right now, everything's too... crazy. Do you think he possibly could have transferred his cork already using that goo substance thing? No, that's how he arrived here. It was a portal, I believe. But seeing as he could use his cork still, I definitely think he should be killed within a couple of hours. Nezu would nod his head before ringing his phone, hopefully trying to get in some connections so that he can do what Izuku had told of him. How All for One was too dangerous to be kept alive. He needed to be offed, and that was the only way the world was going to sustain the peace that he had received when All for One was defeated. So Izuku would then see Nezu put down his phone before thinking for a moment. <clears throat> So you said we'd need a freak accident, right? Yes, I do believe so. Well, the prison is located in a very remote area. Do you think a small-scale explosion would work? What? You could possibly release many other villains doing that. That wouldn't work at all. I do have an idea, though. And what would that be? Well, it's very simple. I go up to speak with him before I summon a bone right where his heart should be, completely destroying the heart. As Nezu would say, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Without the heart, he couldn't use his corks either, just dying in an instant. Well, I'll have some connections to get you there. As Izuku would then be seen on a bus traveling to the middle of nowhere, as it was a very secure armored bus that made sure that nothing was following it. After a couple hours, Izuku would find his way to the prison, as he would then be escorted by a hero into it. I've heard what you are trying to do from Nesu. Do you think you're okay with killing someone? You do seem quite young. Oh, I'm fine with it. This is nothing. As Izuku would end up staring on at All for One, who was sitting with a respirator and tons of tubes going into him, allowing for him to be kept alive. It's a shame, all for one. You're gonna have to become one of your. You're gonna have to become much like some of your victims, as Izuku would then stare right at all for one's blank, empty face, as all for one would then stop. All of the heart monitors would stop, as the breathing would then stop too. Izuku had summoned a bone in there, and it was completely. No one could find the reason why. As All for One died, many people, especially doctors, would come rushing in, wondering what could have happened. As there laid the deceased corpse of All for One, as they would then begin an autopsy, where they would, of course, find a bone right where the heart was, and it had completely just been destroyed. Many of the heroes were not sure what it meant, as Nezu had kept it under wraps, with only him and a few select others could know. 
When Izuku would return the next day, his classmates were delighted to see him back, but they were all so completely shocked at the sheer power that Izuku had used in his fight against All for One. They were completely amazed. There stood in front of them their own classmate that had defeated All for One, someone that their hero teacher failed to do. And that was another thing they just couldn't fathom. All for One. All Might, the number one hero, had been defeated by a random hero or a random villain they've never heard about, and now he's gone. Deceased as a completely huge building had fallen on him. All Might was already weak to begin with because of his injury, but now there was no coming back from that, as he was already dead on impact. So Izuku would then begin his training life at UA once again, where a mourning period would end up happening for the death of All Might. And after this, Izuku would end up being received high praise by all of the news channels, deeming him as the number one hero prospect in the country. As Izuku knew, this was going to bring many villainous eyes on him, wanting to catch some glory for their villain name and to possibly get some credit out there in the villain world. So Izuku, knowing this, he knew he couldn't go outside, like the UA campus, without being targeted by everyone. So Izuku asked for Nezu to do a favor for him. Nez Nezu, after all the stuff that's been happening to my name and appearance, I would actually appreciate it if you managed to build dorms so that my family could move in along with the rest of the students, seeing as I'm a part of this class and the rest. Bringing all this attention to UA might cause unwanted looks from possible villains wanting to get some credit for themselves. Nezu would nod his head, agreeing with Izuku's just what he wanted again, so he decided to ask Cementos, or Cementos, I don't know how to pronounce the name, to build some dorms for the entirety of UA, the first, second, and third years, as Nezu would end up constructing a blueprint for the entire plan as Cementos, Cementos, the cement hero would then begin work. When Izuku would come into class the next day, the cement hero had worked tirelessly all night to build the dorms, as Izuku would see that the UA campus had changed a ton, as Izuku would then contact his mother through Nezu, of course, saying that they need to pack their stuff as fast as they can, as they're going to be moving on to the UA campus for their safety. So Izuku would be sitting in class one day, as the class would then start talking. I heard the finals are next week. Do you guys think you're going to fail? As uh, the class would erupt in a chatter, wondering what the finals could bring. They heard that it was going to be against robots. However, that clearly wasn't the case. When the week would pass, they would all be moved into the dorms. And when they would come back to school, Nezu would be sitting in front of them all at the front of the classroom with Aizawa by his side. Hello, class. As many of you know, I'm your principal, Nezu, here at UA. And today we're going to be doing your finals. Your hero finals, of course. Your written ones won't be due until a couple of days from now, which you all have to write a, let me count, a 20-page essay about the history of heroes and corks, which you guys have to do by Friday, so you all should get that done. And if you don't get a high enough grade on this and that written exam, you're going to have to take some summer school and possibly miss out on a training camp we're going to be doing over the summer in the mountains. So I suggest not failing this, Nezu would say, smiling towards the students. As some of the students would get worried if they were going to have to r r take summer school, well, many of them were worried what this training camp could bring. Not sure if it was going to be a excruciatingly hard camp or not. So they would all be told to go down and put their hero costumes on as they are going to be facing the heroes that had been their teachers for the past couple of months. Once they would go down, they would get changed before heading out to a testing site where they would then be divided into teams of two. Izuku would be paired up with Bakugo while the rest of his classmates would be paired up with someone else. Izuku and Bakugo would end up being paired up against Aizawa. As Izuku, stretching there, would see Bakugo just staring off into space, mumbling to himself about how he's going to get all the glory for himself, and that Izuku's just going to be some rando, 
after they graduate or something, Bakugo was just completely lost in his own mind. So, once the word was given, they all could head into the small neighborhood-type escape. Izuku knew the objective was to take down Aizawa with minimal damage, as if you're going to take down a villain, you don't want to destroy five people's houses. That could be a bigger nuisance. Say if Aizawa was just a burglar, you don't want to destroy five houses capturing him, because now you have destroyed like thousands of dollars in property, while the burglar may have only stolen... $20 worth of items. So it's clearly not what you want to do property damage, which is also one of the biggest problems with the hero Mount Lady. Since she has to grow, there's only so much space she could fit into before she starts to destroy a bunch of things and could end up causing more and more property damage. So hero... So basically, the hero places that hire you as incoming heroes, it's going to be a lot harder if they know you're going to cost them a ton of money. So Azuku knew it's basically training to less don't destroy a ton of things. So Izuku and Bakugo would end up rushing into the city looking for Aizawa anywhere. Izuku decided to get a higher up vantage point where he could look on over the entire cityscape where he would end up seeing Aizawa hopping across the rooftops, as he would then see Bakugo hold onto the ground before exploding off of it, creating a small crater into the road. Zuku would jump off towards Bakugo, yelling at him for being an idiot, and he can't be destroying the roads like this. One of the main objectives they're being graded on is to not destroy property, and if you're going to destroy property, they're going to fail. So Izuku would end up telling Bakugo this, but he would only speed up faster. One of the things Nezu had instilled in their minds was that if you get over $10,000 in property damage, you automatically fail and have to take summer school. So with Bakugo having destroyed the road, it was already at around, let's say, $5,000 in property damage. So Izuku now had to deal with Bakugo not being able to destroy anything else. So Izuku, jumping along, would end up seeing Bakugo in front of him, jumping towards Aizawa, where Aizawa would dodge, erasing Bakugo's cork, as he would then slam into a wall at a house, completely destroying the wall at how fast speeds he was going. As Izuku would end up looking over at the, was the electronic billboard that was over the city, where he would end up seeing their price marker go up a little bit, as he was now at $9,000, thousand away from completely failing them. Izuku would jump towards Bakugo before knocking him out by bonking him on the head with a bone before tying Bakugo up, setting him against the wall. I saw I would ask why Izuku had done this before pointing back at the billboard that was over them, saying that if Bakugo had destroyed anything else, they probably would have failed. As Aizawa would just laugh, not even turning around, knowing if he would, Izuku would probably take advantage of that. So Izuku would then crack his knuckles before jumping right at Aizawa, who Aizawa would then do the same, erasing Izuku's cork, trying to use his scarf to capture Izuku. However, this wouldn't work. Izuku would appear from right behind Aizawa before almost hitting him on the head, before Aizawa was able to dodge this. How the hell did you get over there? I thought I erased your cork. Uh, I guess you don't know what my power is, Aizawa, because it's clearly not a cork at all. As Izuku would then appear from right behind Aizawa again, hitting the back of his neck as if it was baseball, which caused Aizawa's head to crack back before he would then fall down onto the ground. Izuku would then tie up Aizawa, giving him and Bakugo the victory. However, since Bakugo had done nothing productive, Nezu had decided to fail him, giving him summer school, as many of the class would just laugh at this. Bakugo's ego and personality had basically cost him the win. If he would have just teamed up with Izuku like Izuku had asked, he possibly wouldn't have to be taking the summer school at all. So Izuku would then be told he can go, as the rest of his classmates had already finished already, as they were now beginning their way back to the locker rooms to get changed. Izuku would do this as well, as he would then get changed and head back to the dorms. 
Once back there, Izuku would start to stretch out, knowing that today was a great day as he was able to pass the final exams and was able to now go in and try to get his just quirk license, as that was the main thing that their final exams were to judge them on, to see if they were ready to face up against second and third years in from other schools in the quirk licensing exams. However, they weren't going to be doing that just yet, as they had still to do the summer training camp before they were going to do that. So Izuku would go back to the dorms as he was already there now, sitting in his room, chilling, before he would then just hop out of his window, jumping onto the roof of the dorms before exiting the UA campus. Izuku had wanted to hunt down the final remnants of the League of Villains, not wanting any of them to survive, because Izuku knew they are still going to be trying to attack UA at all costs, trying to beat them, as Izuku would hunt down them for weeks, trying to find them, as Izuku would finally end up finding them, or one of them, in a back alley. This, of course, would be Toga, with a knife in hand, slashing it up and down the walls, just creating crisscross patterns all over it, as Toga was just going crazy, while well, not really doing anything but slashing the wall up and down. Suzuku would jump down before smiling. You are quite the new member to the League of Villains, but are still a member, so I guess I'm going to have to stop you from continuing. Or you can join me in finally offing the League of Villains. Togo would end up turning to face Izuku before realizing who it was. Oh, I know you. You were that one weird kid that was there before we even arrived. You say join you, huh? What's in it for me then? As Isuku would just stare at her. Well, I could possibly be get you into UA, but I'm not quite sure about that. I'd have to pull some strings. You'd also possibly have to change your villainous attitude. And a villain doesn't really suit you, eh? So you'd probably have to go through rehab or something. All of a sudden, Toga would jump right at Izuku, having distracted him with his her, her questioning about what she would end up receiving. Izuku would dodge out of the way before finishing Toga off extremely quickly. However, he didn't decide to kill her, deeming as she had barely gotten into villainy at what he had known of her. Having just joined the League of Villains, she wasn't there from when it started and when they had wronged him. So Izuku deciding to spare Toga would end up calling the police saying that he had found a member of the League of Villains before tying Toga up, sitting her up against the wall as he would then give the police his coordinates as he would then jump off away on the rooftops to continue his search. After about a month since the final exams, Izuku and the rest of his class would end up heading off towards the mountains to begin their training camp so that they can do and take the cork testing and licensing exams so that they can use their cork out in public in case they have to save anyone. Damn it! That's another one of our ranks gone and we're just dropping like flies out of here. I'll show those damn kids. I'll show them. We're going to attack that summer camp they're attending right now. So why don't we start preparing? Dobby, I suggest you go and gather up some of the lower ranks so that we can take on these low-life kids. Dobby would nod his head towards Shigaraki before going off to gather the remaining of the ranks that they had left. This is where they would end up gathering Spinner and Magni to join the upper levels to attack the UA students. So, Kirogiri would open up a portal as the villains would then hop through it. Kirogiri would spread them out all across the different parts of the training camp, having had it mapped out a week prior. So, now this is where we start the what if off with Deku and his class now arriving at the UA training camp. Two weeks had uh, basically, this is two weeks before the villains had decided to attack. So this training camp was going to last exactly two weeks. So after two weeks of long and hard, grueling training, they would finally get a break day. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry about that, guys. A uh, car just honked outside. So, basically, they'd finally get a break day to relax and just stretch their muscles so that their muscles can regain as they're going to have to take the cork licenses exactly right after this training camp were to happen. So, with that, it would just be a relaxing day. However, when night would end up coming, they would all just be relaxing in the hot springs or playing hide-and-seek outside in the massive forest. However, all of a sudden, a horrible smell of smoke would end up filling all of their noses. What could that possibly be, many of them would ask. Some of them would turn towards the forest as they would see massive clouds of blue smoke filling the night sky where they would also see a light tint of blue within it, as once they would end up hopping up towards a higher vantage point, they would see massive blue flames just destroying the forest surrounding them. As one of them would then yell out that they're being attacked by villains, as the heroes would come rushing out, asking what they could possibly mean, as the smoke would then fill their noses as well. Many of them would ask, Wait, isn't there still some kids out there playing hide-and-seek? We gotta go look for them. I saw would tell the kids that were sitting in the hot springs and just inside that they need to stay where they are as the class 1B hero and teacher was going to just watch them as he ends up jumping off with Izuku tailing him, not wanting his classmates to be in danger as Izuku's mind would then immediately be flooded, flooded with ideas. It must be the League of Villains, he would end up thinking. He would also think of the young kid named Koda that had been at the training camp when they had arrived. He would end up jumping off to find where he was, where he would end up finding the little kid surrounded, just backing up against the wall with it muscular right in front of him, as if about to just chuck him off of off of the cliff that they were standing on. Zuku would jump down, kicking Muscular in the head, but it would do little to nothing to the giant villain. Zuku would jump back before staring at daggers right at Muscular. Why would you try to hurt such an innocent kid? What did he ever do to you? As Muscular would then turn towards Zuku, taking off an eye patch, this little brat's parents happened to knock one of my eyes out before I killed them. So I just would like to finish off the family before I end up kicking the bucket. Izuku would jump towards Muscular, not allowing him to reach Koda. However, Muscular would just easily backhand Izuku off. Well, then I guess I'll have to make this go the harder way. Izuku's eyes would then, or one of his eyes, would then start growing, glowing a bright blue. Zuku would then lift up Muscular from the ground as he would start saying, What the hell are you doing, you prat? Muscular would then start floating over towards the cliff, pleading for Zuku to let him go. However, Zuku wouldn't care. Did all, how about all those people you killed? Weren't they pleading with you to spare them your lives? I would think so, but you did nothing. Zuku would then release his grip as Muscular would fall down to his doom beyond the cliff. Izuku would grab Koda and would jump off towards where the heroes were and his classmates hiding out at the main base area. Izuku would drop him off before rushing off to go help Aizawa in the search for the rest of their classmates. This is where he would encounter some other villains, but they would all just be easier to take care of than even Muscular, who Izuku just had to lift up using soul manipulation and drop him off of a hill. So... These were quite easy villains. They were nothing compared to All for One. And it would show they were not as well trained as All for One had been. And they lacked all the experience. All for One had been fighting One for All users for generations. While these villains had nothing of that caliber experience. So Izuku and Aisawa would go around defeating them. Picking up the students as they would go. As they would then help making each each villain easier than the last, as all of them would end up being captured, including Shigaraki, Kurogiri would not have 
anything else to do, rather to go and be captured with Shigaraki than not knowing where to continue on without the League. So with them captured, they would then be transported off to a prison as police cars would flood the training camp. Many of their students would end up being picked up by their parents as they would then go off towards their homes. After this, many of them were upset at UA as this was the second time they had been attacked. Of course, word got out about the USJ despite Nezu's tries to keep it under wraps. And since... They had been basically attacked twice now, and their children's lives were at stake so much, they were just thinking about pulling them out of the hero program and UA entirely. However, Nezu made them think, is it really rational to do that? I, we've been training your kids to risk their lives every day to save others. And that's what being a hero is. You took a risk by letting them join the hero program, and now you're trying to take them out for risking their lives. This is what they're going to have to do every single day as a hero. And it actually is quite good practice, even though villains are attacking them with the, just the threats to kill them. And all of this, they have the murder mentality, well, the villains are just going at them, so they have to keep up that, knowing that villains are there trying to off them. And this is great training, as it's a lot of pressure for them to be on. You gotta think about this. Are you gonna let your child's dreams fall right out of their grasp? I'm sure you wouldn't have liked that if you wanted to be a hero, would you? Nezu's pleas would actually end up being quite well like within the parents, as they would, most of them would end up realizing this, as they would all decide not to pull their kids out of school, despite a select few would actually end up doing it. Now, after this, a day would pass as the licensing exams would then begin. Izuku would easily tear through the entirety of the place, easily passing with the help of his court or his powers and his classmates. So, when the next event would begin with the rescue and having to fight off the villains, which were just some heroes disguised as villains, basically, but many of them could just tell it was heroes acting like villains, as it was a licensing exam, so they would all just be deciding whether they were going to rescue a bunch of people from the debris or try to fend off the villains, which Izuku would easily be able to do both, sending bones to be able to lift up debris off of people while also managing to keep the villains back at bay, as these actors who were basically faking as victims were easily able to get a liking for Izuku with his confident personality and reassurance that everything was going to be okay towards them. As Izuku, along with the entirety of his class, would end up getting their licenses, besides, of course, Bakugo, who was fighting too much with the others trying to fend off the villains. So, with Izuku now having his license to use his cork, which in reality was his powers, Izuku's dream had basically become true. However, it would take a lot more than that for his dreams to become a hero would end up becoming reality. So, a couple years would end up passing. Izuku would graduate from UA High School, as we now see him standing high, proud, on top of a building, smiling down. His name was plastered everywhere. Izuku, that was the name of the, as that was the name of the hero, as many of people didn't know that because his hero name was Sans. He had decided to honor the person that made his life just a dream, and so he chose the hero name Sans. Plastered everywhere was Izuku's name on toys, action figures, everything. Even he had his own branded ketchup. So Izuku's life and dream had become a reality, and he was smiling down and knowing that it was perfect. He also knew that he just had to wait for the next league to arise and to take them down, just like he had to the League of Villains. And that is where this series ends. I hope you all did enjoy What If Deku Had Sans Powers, and I thought it was quite the good series. Not sure what you all think, but yeah, I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.